Today, I'm reacting to Tom Cruise's watch collection. Tom Cruise. I am genuinely not a fan of Tom Cruise. He's in Mission Impossible. I've seen number one yeah. and number two. And then there's how many Mission Impossible movies are there? They're filming number seven right now. Tom Cruise is an unbelievable actor. Like, his stunts and the shit that he does himself. Fair f play. A lot of respect for that. Maybe he's a dead-on guy. I don't know. Rain Man. Casino scene. Now listen, casinos have house rules. The yeah. first one is they don't like to lose. He's pawning his Rolex Day-Date. This is a 36 millimeter Rolex Day-Date. Reference number 18038. Nice watch to be fair. Like It's a bit small nowadays, but I do like it. It's a really small guy though. Oh yeah, he's quite short, isn't it? He's just a, an angry, aggressive midget, isn't he? Much like yourself. I am not angry. I'm never angry. What, when, when was Rayman, Rain Man? Rain Man. Rain Man is from what year? 1988. Funny enough, the production of the Rolex Day Date 18038 stopped in 1988. Rolex Day Date presidential bracelet, yellow gold, champagne dial. Uh, 1988, this watch would have been worth about $4,000. Today, the value of this watch sits between fourteen dollars and $16,000. The best comment of last week's video is from Bossy Benny. Nico, it's for sale, ladies and gentlemen. Also, Nico. It's the watch. We call this edible gold. You won yourself a god tier watch. Welcome to my most humble, dishonorable establishment. Well, thank you. Well, it's more than a circus before I get this job. That's a really difficult call. That looks like a Rolex Datejust 16200. What year is this movie? It's 1980. It can't be a 16200 because the production of the Rolex 16200 started in 1989, so a year after this movie was filmed. It must be an Air King then. From the early 80s onwards to the late 90s, the Rolex Air King shared the same bracelet and the same case as the Rolex Datejust. However, the Air King was made in 34 millimeter. Back in the day, the Rolex Datejust wasn't called the Rolex Datejust when it was made in 34 millimeter. It was called the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Date. Does that make in any way, shape or form sense what I just said? Yeah. All right, good. My guess is that this is the Rolex Air King, reference number 5500. Not really the prettiest of watches, to be honest. It's such a difficult watch to really judge. What's up, TikTok? Got a little tip for you. Call it a uh, tip talk. Deep fake? What is deep fake? I never heard of deep fake. I heard of deep throat, but... Can you put someone else's face on footage of a different person? You know, I do all my own stunts. Obviously. Uh, I also do my own music. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying this is not Tom Cruise? Mate, this is 100% Tom Cruise. What are you talking about? He's wearing an out of Piquet Royal Oak. So the Tom Cruise who's not Tom Cruise is wearing the best watch that Tom Cruise has ever not wore. Here, this is weird. I told you that in the previous video, it was the Rolex reference number 16200, probably. But it couldn't be because the watch was produced from 1989 and the movie was from 1988. This is a Rolex 16200. That's f***ing weird because I thought it was that watch. Now I'm actually confused. Oh, look who's here, Callum Freezy. What the f***? What are, you, what are you filming? They're playing a football match, the side men versus a hundred kids on the pitch. Look at that. Hey, you, hey, you were so shit at football that you were promoted to become a manager instead of a player? Hey, look, they, they needed, they needed the, the pep of English football and they've, they've got him. <laughs> <laughs> legend. Let, let, me, let me give you a ring back once I finish this video. I've got like another hour. Yeah, take your time, mate. No rush. No rush. Yeah, f***ing hell, that was wild. Right, back to Tom Cruise because we're f***ing going from left to right to f***ing... What are you doing? Tip the spear. Just wondering. Best to be sure. Who's the best? In case some of you wonder who the best is, they're up here on this plaque on the wall. The best driver in his reel from each class has his name on it. Top Gun. The movie Top Gun. I still have never seen the movie Top Gun. I've barely seen any f***ing movies anyway. I can't f***ing see that. Looks like an IWC Top Gun, to be fair. Funny enough. No, he's not wearing he's not, he's not wearing an IWC Top Gun, by the way, may I add. The watch that you see here on the right is not the watch that he's wearing. The watch you see here is an IWC Top Gun. Movie Top Gun. I understand the link, but there's a bit of a difference here. The Top Gun line of IWC was introduced from 2007 onwards. Now, the movie is dating back out of... 1986. 
86. So that's not the exact watch that Tom Cruise was wearing. People think that the watch brand IWC started the Top Gun in honor of this movie, but that is absolutely not the case. Top Gun was actually a proper flight fighting flight Fighting flight school that finds its origin during the Vietnamese war. I actually think that the watch Tom Cruise is wearing here was designed by the designer of the Porsche 911. I believe that this is the Porsche design first series of the chronograph they've produced. And I think they started production of that in the early 70s. And that is the watch he's actually wearing in this movie. So not an IWC. That Porsche, that watch is not really a pilot watch. So it's a bit weird like. That makes sense in the whole time frame as well to be honest. Because this is not an IWC Top Gun. Because the Top Gun was introduced in 2007. The movie is dating back in 1986. Is it not that he, f he actually flies the, f the actual jets? Yeah. mad like, I'll give him that. I'll give him that. He is a mad c***. <laughs> Looks like a proper Tom Cruise movie. Don't really do Tom Cruise movies, to be honest. Where is Tom Cruise from? Is he from America? He loves the UK. And you know what he's wearing here? A British watch brand called Bremen. You know that British watchmaking was significantly bigger than Swiss watchmaking in the early, early days of watches. Even Rolex was a British watch brand. They were founded in 1905 in London. Bremen is actually a very young watch brand. Bremen has been making watches since 2002. And to be honest, the recent years, they've started to really push. You see them more and more often nowadays. I must say, I'm not the biggest fan of some of their designs. This particular chronograph, I do really like. Slate gray dial, incredible leather strap, good, good quality, but they're using generic movements from brands like ETA. After going through Tom Cruise's collection, it really shows that an important piece doesn't have to be expensive. Have a look at this Tudor chronograph that he's wearing, apparently the Mission Impossible 4 movie. The only reason I know that is because it says on the screen. This is the Tudor Heritage Chronograph, reference number 703. 30N and stands for noir in this case. Black, black bezel. The 2010 introduced re-edition of the Tudor Chronograph 7032. Tom Cruise has a quirky watch collection, I'm not gonna lie. Panerai Luminor Marina, what do you want me to say? It's not my favorite watch in the world, is it? It's way too big for that small guy. What would you rate his watch collection out of 10? I would rate his watch collection five and a half out of 10. There's no real piece of shit. There's no real hublot either. That's all right. It's all right, it's average. No, Tom Cruise is not really a watch guy, unfortunately. I'm wondering what else he would wear. Tom Cruise is that type of guy that would wear a G-string at his private house with his swimming pool walking around to make sure that his ass cheeks are tanned as well. 